keep running the same. Whoa, look at that. Hello, hello, hair bestie. I am Guy Tang, and I'm here with my friend Colleen. Well, I haven't seen her in over a year. It's been a long time, and you can see she's grown up quite a bit. The last time I did her hair, we did the lift me up system with the pearl, and you can see the grow up is beautiful. Her hair naturally has a lot of texture, so she has a lot of body and volume. And she is a natural level 7. And by the way, this is the new swatch page insert in the Guy Tang My Daddy swatch book. So this is a must have. It's going to be in the new swatch book that you're going to get. And you see here, you can use it to measure your client's natural level because she's a natural level 7. It's not going to be too rough to line it up. And that's going to be a lot of fun lift me up because it lifts and tone in one step. Are you ready, Colleen? I'm so ready. Let's go. Okay, it's time to lift you up. You ready? I'm so ready. Here you go. <laughs> You're being lifted. All right, let's put the body condom on. Protect you with the cape. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is really important. Always cape your clients, okay? This is step one. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's spin her around. Let's take a close look. And I want you to come in here and take a look. You can see that Colleen's natural hair is a level seven. So she is going to be easy to lift. However, we still like to save time and step and lift and tone in one step. And that's the beauty of Lift Me Up. Her hair has natural texture. So when you take a look at it, there's a lot of like um, texture in it that people might mistaken for damage or frizzy or breakage, but that's not the case. This is just how her hair is. And I feel like on social media, we often look at hair and we think everything needs to be smooth. But you have to realize that natural hair does have like you know different textures that go through it so don't think that the hair is not strong the hair is actually very strong you can see here if i pull it her hair is really healthy very strong so she can take uh, 30 volume even 40 if needed to but because she's a natural level seven all we're going to use is 30 volume all right so currently there are three shades in lift me up we have pearl which has a violet purple base we have bright blonde which has a gold base to it because not everybody wants to be ashy. Some of this needs vibrancy, brightness, and something to bring that glow back in, right? And this is the key here. This is actually one of my favorites because we've seen a lot of bright, warm tones bouncing back. And then we have Rose Blonde. Rose Blonde is beautiful. And all of these shades, the three of them are intermixable. So you get to create like seven different types of tones with the three shades. So there is a swatch page insert, which is very important for you to have. And you can actually get this through Carla. I'm actually going to put her phone number below here so you get to text her. And if you're a Guy Tang My Danny user in the U.S., you can text her and she will make sure you get the swatch page if you're a user. So that's very important. <laughs> so you can see here there are three shades, rose, bright, and pearl. And in this swatch page here, you can see on, on each swatch, you can see that there is a number, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you get to see the tone that you get to have on each level, right? So you get to see the results. Now on this watch, we use 20 volume to predict all of these results. Now you can use 30, you can use 40, but usually you only need 10 to 20 volume, right? But sometimes I will use 30. So let's pull out the, the swatch page level finder. You can see here, if you're a natural level, there are five, Right here, you can see this is gonna be your result. Right there, that's your result. If you're a natural level six here, that's gonna be your result. So the swatch page literally tells you your results. So you have no excuse not knowing or being surprised what your result is gonna be. Now, how do you push the boundaries, right? So obviously this is shown with 20 volume. If you wanna use 30 or 40, you can push the hair further more and get the lighter color result that you see up here on the night but everybody's hair is different. Now the Lift Me Up is designed to lift and tone, so it will break through color-treated hair. So if your client has color of hair, let's say darker, for example, let's say she's a natural level seven, and she's color hair maybe a little six or seven, right? So therefore, it's no longer virgin. You can use the Lift Me Up system and still lighten the hair and not have to, you know, lighten, bleach, and tone 
you literally can do it in one step. But if your client's a natural level eight or nine and she colored hair level one black, now that's a color correction. You don't use the lift me up to try to, you know, cut time because you have to think about, you know, the reality of it. That's a color correction if she went from a 10 to a one. But if she's an eight or seven and went down to a seven or six and it's artificial, you can still break through that color. So that's what I mean is really cool about the lift me up system is that you can break those uh, barriers and break the rules and lift and tone in one step because it's a hybrid lift and tone system. Now keep in mind that everyone's hair has natural underlying pigment. So this is the natural underlying pigment swatch page. When you lighten hair from a darker level to a lighter level, you're gonna expose orange, you know, red, a yellow, gold tones that are in our hair. Everyone has a different level amount of warm undertones. For me, I have red, orange, yellow, gold, because my hair is naturally a level three. I'm really dark. I am darkest brown, black, right? So if I'm gonna light my hair, I know I'm gonna have to combat all of this, but because Colleen is a natural level seven, you can see a natural level seven only has gold and a little bit of orange in it. So she doesn't have much to combat. Plus her hair is virgin up here at the top. So there isn't gonna be much warmth at all to combat. So this is gonna be very, very simple. Okay, so now today we are gonna use the Max Tone Max Lift. Before, you know, I'm gonna put the chart right here next to me so you can see that there are three different mixing options. There's a standard mixing option which you're gonna get the standard lift and tone. Now with that, you get 10, you can mix 10 grams of Magnum 8, okay, um, which is our powder lightener. So it's gonna lighten the hair. And then you gotta mix 14 grams of your desired toner of choice. And then of course, make sure you mix 14 grams of the Empower Oil as well. The oil must be used in this system because the oil ensures that it encapsulates the dye so it doesn't get eaten up by the lightener. And then you do 40 grams of developer of choice, whether it be 10 volume, 20 volume, 30 volume, or 40 volume. Now, when do you know to use 10 volume? When do you know to use 20 volume? When do you know to use 30 volume? Now, this is where, you know, I feel like this is gonna, what I share with you today is gonna go across the board. Usually 10 volume, if I'm doing baby lights around the money piece or the face frame close to the scalp, that's where I'm going to use that 10 volume. If I'm going to foil on the scalp and lay the foil on the head up back here, I'm going to use 20 volume, right? And if I'm, if I'm going to foil away from the body, I'm going to use 30 volume, meaning if I back comb ombre on the ends, do a bunch of back combing foiling, that's going to extend so far from the body heat, I'm going to need more energy on that hair that is so far from the body, I'm gonna use 30 volume. In some cases, if I wanna push that hair further more, I can use 40 volume on the hair, if the hair is all the way down here. If her hair is down to her hips and is so far extended, you're gonna to need to use 40 volume sometimes if the hair is very, very resistant. So that's how you know where to use 10, 20, 30, 40. Cause you don't need to use 40 volume right around the hairline, you're gonna cause damage, right? But here, 40, 30, 20, 10. I hope that, you know, is something that we can relate to because that makes it so easy for, for you uh, when you're formulating. Then you have the extra lift soft tone. When I use the soft tone formula, this is in the center here at the chart. You can see right here, there's a chart. The middle a formulation option is for when you want to lift the hair, but you don't want so much tone. For example, let's say you want to use the rose, right? And the thing is, it's gonna look very, very pink right, in a swatch page. So if you don't want the hair to look too, too pink, you only need to use, you know, a little bit of it. So the only difference with this is you're gonna double the Magnum 8, right? You're gonna put more Magnum 8 in the formula versus the 10 grams of Magnum 8 with the regular standard, but you're gonna use 20 grams. So by doubling it, and then also, instead of using 14 grams of the color and oil, you're only gonna use five grams, right? So five grams of each. By adding less toner in it, you're gonna get less tonal deposit. So the tone is gonna to appear more blush. So you get more of a blush blonde with the rose, and you're gonna get more of a soft golden blonde with the bright tone. Just very soft toning, but maximum lifting. Basically, you're gonna get like, like let me show the swatch here. You're gonna get a lot of brightness exposed through, which is that level 10. 
So a lot of rawness, but just a little hint of tone. And if you're gonna use the pearl, it's not gonna overtone because these are very pigmented and your hair is gonna look super ashy. But if you only want that purple toner to barely kiss the hair, and you would use the uh, Max Lip Soft Tone. That way you get like a soft tonal deposit. Now, you also have the third option, which I'm gonna put right here. It's gonna be the Extra Lip Max Tone, which is what we're gonna use today. Now, the difference between this one is you're gonna get maximum lift, so you're gonna get to lift the hair as light as possible, and you're gonna get maximum toning. So what that means is you're gonna get full potential of each tone you decide to choose. You're gonna get the super pink tone, the super gold tone, or super ashy pearl tone. It's gonna give you maximum color deposit. And here you are gonna double the uh, Magnum 8. So the creativity and the options are up to you how much you want. Now, if this is gonna be your first time using Lift Me Up, I always say start with the standard, which is gonna be your first option Start with your standard, get familiarized with the product. Once you feel confident familiarized with the product, you get to sample each one of these formulations and you get to maximize your full potential of using Lift Me Up in your salon. It's gonna cut your time in half. Trust me, it has changed my life, it's gonna change yours. So we are gonna use the Extra Lift Max Tone. So I'm gonna start with the developer first. I'm gonna use 30 volume and I'm gonna start in the back of her head. Okay, so we're gonna put 40 grams of developer and there you go and i'm going to use max tone so i'm going to do okay 14 grams okay for for those of us who don't measure this is very important to measure okay always measure what you're working with so that way when you go back to remix you get the same results i always compare it to like going to a restaurant Sometimes I get so annoyed, I go to my favorite restaurant and then the food tastes different the second time I go back around because somebody, the chef in the back kitchen somewhere decides to get a little creative, put more salt. I think, no, it's too salty this time. That's not how I like my orange chicken, okay? I like it to be consistent every time I go back. So it's very important to measure. Don't eyeball. I know some of us are eyeballers. 14 grams of the Empower Oil. So always remember when we're dealing with all these components, you're like, wow, there's too many things. Always remember, oil, toner, it's always gonna be equal parts. So 14, 14. You don't have to think that hard with that. It's the equal parts and there's the developer and then the lightener. You know, this is really simple. Just think lightener and developer and adding the toner in. It's really not that much, you know? Once you get used to it, it becomes, you know, like your everyday mixing thing that you do. Okay, so Magnum 8, I'm going to double this. So we're going to do 20 grams, right? For those of us who are not good at math, this is really important to measure so you know what you're working with. I am the worst at math, okay? Ugh. So that's why measuring is so important for someone like myself. And I know you can relate. There's a lot of you that can relate to this. Okay, so let's take a look at the bowl here. I want you to take a look at how it looks like in a bowl. So you can see the purple toner and also the oil. You can see the developer right over here. You can see the powder right over here. So now you're gonna mix it all together. Now we know the standard is the 10 grams of the Magnum 8, but I did double so that way we get more lift, right? By doubling the Magnum 8 powder lightener ratio, you're gonna get more power more lift, right? And I know it looks scary because woo, it looks purple. And a lot of us can look at this and go like, whoa, is her hair gonna turn purple? But just trust the process, it's not, okay? Okay, so now is the time to add in Olaplex number one. So Olaplex does have a pH of 3.5, less is more. Olaplex repair the bonds of the hair so it ensures that your hair is protected. Let me make sure I take that cap off there. Okay, so you see, you see that little bit of drop that's in there? That's how much you're gonna put in, okay? So you're gonna go, whoop, there you go. That's all you need. Sometimes we overuse it. I generally use more in my direct dyes. I generally use more in my toners. But when I'm lifting the lightener, I wanna protect the hair, but also get the performance, right? Because I'm also gonna add in Guy Tang, my hero collagen powder, and less is more, okay? So you need collagen because it also protects the the protein structure of the hair. So I'm gonna use less than a quarter of the scoop. So you can see here, there you go. I'm gonna sprinkle the collagen powder in 
And then now we're gonna stir that up and now we're ready to apply Lift Me Up to her hair. I'm going through Colleen's hair here and I want you to look how beautiful that grow out is to her color from Lift Me Up. A year later and look at the tone. Colleen, how do you feel about that? It's unbelievable. I'm hair literate. I, I'm not able to tone my own hair in real life. So to have it stay that beautiful for this long, it's huge for me. And you said your hair turns yellow quite easily, correct? So easily. Yeah, it's something that I always had to battle and people would tell me to buy the purple shampoo, but because I don't really know how to do hair, I would end up causing damage from overtoning with that shampoo. Oh, wow. So to not have to do that, just to use my my Genity shampoo and conditioner and have this result is amazing. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, I want you, okay, uh, for those of you who have, you know, struggles with backcombing certain hair types, Colleen does have really slippery and healthy hair, which is a good thing. I like to use the Guy Tang My Thick Body Spray because this gives a lot of texture to the hair. So before starting with this section, I like to mist the hair from afar with my thick body just to get a little grit and grip into the hair. So you'll see me spray each section just lightly from afar. So you're letting that fog and the mist just catch into the hair. So now there's a little bit more grip there because her hair is so slippery. If I try to back comb her hair, it's not gonna stay put. So now I'm gonna back comb the bottom part. Now I'm not gonna try to get all the way up to her routage or scalp. What I want is the highlight to start a little bit lower so there's a little bit of shadow because by nature, hair is naturally darker than hair. I know some of us like to highlight all the baby hairs and all the tiny hairs, but to me that draws attention to the short hairs because remember, light highlights and it draws attention and brings focus to something. So do you really want to bring focus to short bits like this? Like, I, I don't personally because to me it looks like breakage. And the hair and the nape are usually the ones that get tangled and wiry with your collar and it gets breakage down there really easily. You know what I'm talking about, those little beads and split ends, oh, they're so annoying. So why draw attention to them? Make them dark and let them stay dark while you draw attention to the light. So that being said, now I'm going to back home once. You see by adding that thick body texture spray, look at that grip. One push and it stays put, right? So now I get to highlight pretty close in. Now, color canvas, uh, color board here. Now, how I use the color boards, I lay the foil down, and these are framework foils, so you can get to my coffee pot, then I fold it over that edge of the flap there, right? And I'm gonna go up like this. Now, if you wanna get closer to the scalp, what you can do is tuck that away, but that's not what I'm gonna do. I'll do that later, I'll show you. So first, we are gonna dip into the Lift Me Up. Now, you, you are gonna wanna create a jagged line here. So you'll see me do like a V shape still. And what I love about the Lift Me Up is it penetrates the hair so easily. You don't have to paint on the foil first before laying the hair down. Because of the oil and the liquid toner consistency, it literally just seeps right into the hair right away, just like so. Now I'm gonna leave some of the tips up right in through there because the tips are pretty light. Then I'm just gonna pull out and I'm gonna pull the foil down just a little bit, just like that. Now I'm gonna lay a foil right over the top. Now I'm gonna make this cute because this is the guy tang more to me foils because we're allowed to have fun in a salon and do cute things. So, Colleen, what do you think about these cute foils? Oh my god. That's you me! Look amazing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes, I thought that was super cute. So thank you, Framar, for the foils. So you're gonna see me take every section one at a time here and you can always judge your section based on the density on the ends. Don't judge it based on how dense the section is on the scalp. Oftentimes we section everything based on scalp. What we need to do is focus on the ends, right? So you can see here it's a little bit too thick right in through there. So I'm just going to take a finer section. Now, they never taught me this in beauty school. I had to figure this out through life as I navigate and do 
hundreds of clients and thousands of clients throughout the years, right? You have to kind of figure it out. So you see, you could read through the ends, right? If you can see through the ends and read a newspaper through the ends, well, who reads a newspaper now? But you know what I mean? If you can read a book, yeah, if you can read a book through the ends here, then that means that's a good section. So if you want maximum diffusion, I lift the hair up. So by lifting the hair up, just like that, and get the comb, back comb, back, boom, once, and you bring the hair down, make sure you still hold the hair in the panel. So don't rope the hair by pinching it. You have to hold the hair flat. Hold the hair flat in the panel, and then back comb from the top surface and push that hair up. Now, from this point, you can foil the hair up a lot higher to the scalp, right? So here you go, get your board out. Okay, and then fold the foil flat right over that edge there. Now, I'm going to anchor this right onto the head. Now, this is up to you. I'm going to show you a very cool technique that I love. I get the comb, and I literally use it to tuck all the back comb away. By doing that, you're able to get right up close to the scalp with the diffusion, right? And then you could go like this and get up in there. And this is up to you if you want to do that. Sometimes I do this, and sometimes I do this every other foil. So that way there's an alternation. Some parts hang lower, some parts go up higher. By doing this, you get more diffusion and more closer to the scalp application. And this, this is where the foil board really comes into play because it creates like a platform for tension, which really helps me change the game when I'm foiling and coloring. So you see here, I'm still gonna feather it down. Now I get to move the comb out so I don't have to juggle with that. So, and here, you can see, because I fold the flap over, I get to open that flap back out at the top, drag it down just a little bit so it gives me a little bit more flexibility in the ends to feather right there. So now you're going to feather through and then leave the tips out because you don't want to overlap. Right? Having a nice flat platform to paint on really gives you more tension and grip so you don't have to work as hard juggling the foils. And also the application looks a lot more neat. Okay, make sure that flap is nice and straight there. All right, so now I'm gonna lay the foil right over and we'll repeat as we move up. Just like so. All right, let's just go ahead and put a little bit more of the My Thick Body on here just to get a little bit more grip. The hair is extra slippery there. So again, you'll see me hold the hair at the ends you can see how the hair is a little bit thicker right through the routage of the mid shaft. But notice that when it gets down to the ends, it gets finer and thinner. This is normal because hair kind of, you know, sheds off and new hair grows in. So most of the hair density is here. So the ends get a little bit more fine. That's normal. And so we're going to create the same diffusion here. So again, I'm going to elevate the hair up. And watch, as I pull the back comb down, you can see how I'm pushing all the short hair right down, right? And it's really important with this hand that I have up here that I hold it with tension in the panel, right? Just like so, and the comb is still here on the scalp. So now that I move my hand down, adding tension while spreading the hair so it's not rope, I then push the hair one more time so every short strand gets pushed back. So you're only highlighting long hair. So all the long hair is what's gonna get seen, all the short hair gets pushed back, okay? Okay, so many folks have asked me why I don't fold the foil up. You can fold the foil up if you want to, but what I find is that when I lay the foil down, it evens out the porosity more. Like for example, you see how the ends are lighter? The mids are darker and it gets even darker up here. By laying the same, you know, hair down, even though I slightly overlap here, it's away from the body so this doesn't get damaged, right? So the ends don't get damaged. Now, if the hair is more virginal, you can fold it up so that way it has body heat and body temperature. So that's why I choose to do a foil overlay versus like a pull up. It's up to you and the canvas you're starting on. So everyone's canvas is different. That's why you can choose to fold up depending on your client's uh, starting level. 
Okay, so here we're going to start lower. We're going to start right down the ends here and then work our way up. As I feather and work my way up, I'm going to go into a jagged line, just like so, and go into that V shape. This ensures that there is no line at all, even if, you know, no matter which way you pull it, you're going to get like diffusion. You know, by doing a straight line, you can see the straight highlight line inside if you remove the, uh, the, the back combing. So that's why this is important. And I still go from left to right or right to left to spread that hair, it penetrates. And you'll see here, because I have so much room here, you can see there's room to pull. So I get to pull that foil. That, that's one of my favorite techniques to do, is being able to pull the foil down so I don't have to put another foil down here to connect. I can just borrow the amount that I have here that I just pulled to continue the same foil length, right? Having this flat platform to paint on with the, with the color canvas helps. Again, you'll see me feather. Okay, and spread that hair right down here so there's no streaking. I call them skid marks when you have, you know, these little streaks because it looks really bad. So that's why you'll see me do that is to feather down. And sometimes you have, you see that you have darker pieces down here, because not every strand got highlight last time. You can go ahead and bring those ends up and lighten them. Okay, and then now we're gonna do a foil overlay. Uh, the cool thing is, with the Lift Me Up, I could start back here and in the front process for 45 minutes and everything lifts evenly. You don't have to worry about pulling out in the back or, or where you started because everything times accordingly. So Colleen, you've always wanted to be a singer? I have. I have. But it's not something that I'm naturally gifted at and my career has very luckily put me around people who are naturally great at it. So I've never really had the courage to go for it. I just admire so much that you had the dream and you're making it happen and your music is so beautiful and vulnerable and thank you. <laughs> so much courage goes into that. It does take a lot of courage and bravery to put yourself out there because people always judge whether you know you're dancing, acting, singing, modeling. People are always judging you when you put yourself out there on social media. And it was a different time for me growing up because back in the 90s and 80s, we didn't have social media. There's a blessing with social media because we get to make our YouTube videos, educate people, share hair education, put my music out there, um, put ourselves out there ourselves, um, representation that we've never seen before growing up, you know, seeing faces that look like ours, mm -hmm. where growing up I never seen anyone that looked like me, but there's also this whole thing when everyone has an opinion and everyone's like, you know, you, we have to read these comments and sometimes the comments are great and then sometimes the comments are very hurtful right mm -hmm. and I think that's the part that is a challenge um, because when you you know I mean I read all my comments usually most of them um, when I can and I see great ones but I, when you see like one bad one it's like a stain on a, a white t-shirt you yeah. see it right away yeah. and then all of a sudden it can hurt you and it take it took me so long to overcome those comments because it's like I think for all of us it takes time because you really have to have confidence in yourself and know who you are so those comments don't hurt you and you realize that sometimes oftentimes most of the times hurt people hurt people yep. so those people who leave mean comments on people's pages they're probably going through something themselves and so what happens instead of me getting mad and lashing out I start to understand, oh, that person's going through something. They have a bad day or whatever, even though that makes no excuse. <laughs> Just because you have a bad day don't mean you go and attack people. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. No, there's no excuse for that. And I really think they need to have, like, you know, a new program in schools. Yeah. That, sh you know, that shows people social media et etiquette. Yeah. Because you know how we learn how to shake hands. We learn how to you know, eat at the table properly, have manners, it's called manners, mm -hmm. Yeah. right? But why don't schools talk about social media etiquette? Yeah, they really should because there's, I cannot imagine, I'm so glad social media didn't exist when I was 13. Oh my gosh, I can't imagine what I may have 
put out there because you just you don't realize when you're that young the ramifications of of your words yet you know i think it's a conversation that needs to be had mm -hmm. you know had for your you know as a parent yeah. or a teacher is to you know really educate kids on like the uh, the consequences yeah exactly. because there's consequences sure we can all have opinions mm -hmm. sure we all can speak up but everything comes with consequences yeah. and what we don't realize is what we put out there not only stays out there forever, forever. <laughs> you can't i mean someone screenshot you or mm -hmm. and things can be taken out of context yeah. it's so important to not only when you type something out don't send it. Yeah. Read it because sometimes you're in the heat of the moment. You're angry and you're 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 in, in heat. Yeah. And you're not thinking clearly. And all of a sudden you're you know typing all these things out. And then you send it, and all of a sudden someone screenshot you. Not only can you lose your job, mm -hmm. not you know in the future your opportunities can be taken away from you because people saw what you wrote. Yeah. And I definitely don't forget it because there's so many times I read it. You know, a really mean comment about me. Someone says like, "You're so ugly. Your face looks like this. I hate your voice." And then you see them in public somewhere, and then you're like, "Oh!" And then that, that's actually, to be honest, I someone wrote something really mean about my work and my hair and stuff I do. That person didn't know that I saw it. Oof. Yeah, and that person ended up working right next door to me. Yeah. Oh my god. And and she apologized to me in person because she didn't realize I could see it because she didn't write it directly on my page. She mm -hmm. wrote bad about me on someone else's page. Right. But I saw it and yeah. someone tagged me into it. Uh -huh. And that's the thing. Just because she didn't say something bad about someone directly to them on their page doesn't mean it cannot be seen right. on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter. Right. And then what happens is, you know what? At the same time, even though she said something that hurt me, you know what I, I did? I actually went over there to talk to her and I said, I gave her a gift. I know. Aww, I did. You're so sweet. I did. I gave her a gift and because she kept on saying, you know, she was making fun of my work and how it looks unrealistic, how I set unrealistic expectations for stylists and blah, blah, blah. I, I recommended, you know, you could go on Amazon, get this ring light and get the same result. And here's the products I use and I gave her the products I use. And I said, this is how you get these results. And I share all of my formulas and techniques with her because sometimes you can't fight fire with fire. Sometimes mm -hmm. you gotta add, you know, love and water to it to, you know, you don't want to feel the fire, but like put out the fire yeah. because at the same time I realized she was hurting. Yeah. And although it's not my job or my duty to do that, it's all about having purpose. My purpose is never to hurt people. My purpose is to, you know, help people heal yeah. and i realized that and in order to help people heal you have to be healed yourself yeah. if people hurt you then there's something i need to work on within myself if mm -hmm. i'm hurt by words i have to go play is this person right mm -hmm. i have to question myself and i realized i'm not hurt by it i'm yeah. not the problem i realized that someone else is hurting yeah. really badly yeah. and if i could change their per perception and perspective of me or whatever the case may be then so be it that's what i'm going to do even if it takes energy out of my day and for, for, for you, you know, I'm not saying you should do what I did or do what I do. That's just how I approach it because I feel like, you know, we need to spread love and not hate, mm -hmm. right? And, and that, that's a, a ripple effect too because you chose to greet her with kindness mm -hmm. and now that's going to ripple out and she is going to approach things with more kindness and so that one good deed that you did has ripples throughout other people's lives and that's amazing because what what benefit does it give if i was mean back because i was oh, why let someone ruin your day mm -hmm. just because they have a bad day they they you let them make you have a bad day too that's not cool right yeah and that's the cool thing about like you know i think that we have the power to make a difference we have the power to let certain things like that affect us or change the way it affects us. You can't control how people behave. You can't control how people treat you, but you can control how you respond to it. Exactly. You can control how you treat them. Yep. And everything's within your control, you know? So I know that's kind of deep, but these <laughs> are facts. It always is, it always is when we get together, I love it. But you know what? It kind of goes back to live me up. Yep, 
Exactly. It's about lifting people up at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. It's like, you know, the concept isn't only about the product. When I named Lift Me Up, I was going through some moments, okay? I was very stressed. I was like, and I feel like, you know what? I need a Lift Me Up. I want a product that not only lift the hair up and deposit tone in one step and save time, but also conceptually, what does Lift Me Up means to me? And what does it mean to you? So I want to know how you feel. What lifts you up? You know, for me, it's about getting a massage, <laughs> right? <laughs> getting a facial or something like that, you know? So do something for yourself. Do something that will lift you up and don't ever let anyone hurt you. And I know it's easier said than done, but you have the power and the control within yourself to, you know, write your own book, tell your own story. Mm -hmm. Don't let someone control you in your mind. And this is, this is your life. Live it. And, and, and truly be free within yourself, right? So I want I want you to come back over here so you can see what I'm doing. Lift me up, as you can see here. Oftentimes when we look at it, the product on the hair, you go, oh my God, it's gonna look purple, it's gonna look dark, it's gonna look scary. But when you actually just go like this, you go, oh, that's not scary at all because the product isn't as dark or scary as it appears, right? It's actually more translucent than you think. So when it goes over the hair, it's gonna tone and lift the hair at the same time. So watch what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna show you again. Okay, this is something I did earlier, but I wanna show you. You see this flap that I did? This flap saves, will save you every single time. Open up that flap, pull the foil down. Cause you see all this negative space between the hair that's uncolored? Pull that down right there. So now you have all this extra foil room. So you get to, you see how this, this isn't colored. So you can see here, a lot for level seven has been left out. You can literally just fold this back in, the, the foil, and apply the product, just like so. And then, that's it. And now we can do the foil overlay. Lifting up really change, you know, it's gonna change your life in a salon because it really cuts time in half. Plus it makes things more interesting, you know, for you and your client. Just like, see right there, I'm gonna do the overlay and boom. I just work my way up and let her process all at the same time for 45 minutes. All right, so now I am gonna foil around the parietal area. So take a look here. Oftentimes we have these little baby hairs, these little short hairs. Remember, you don't wanna highlight them. I feel like we always feel like we have to highlight baby hair because now you have to get all the hairline and no, it's gonna look like breakage and also when you make that light, you also make the hair look like it's receding back further. So the hair is naturally already light around the hairline because the shorter hairs are already, uh, they're already lighter and they're finer. So don't draw attention to that. Highlight the long hairs that are behind it. So when I lift the hair up here, you can see all these short hairs kind of coming out. You don't need to highlight those. Trust me, they will look like breakage. There's so many times I see how Everyone says, oh, highlight the baby hairs, highlight the short hairs. And every time I've done it, 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 I've never been happy, especially on Asian hair or dark hair types like myself. If you highlight these little baby hairs, it looks like something's off. So, and even on hair that's light, like Colleen being a natural level seven, you want to avoid that. So by highlighting behind it, you're, the, the baby hair is gonna blend right into the long hair. So if her hair is slippery, even though there's lots of texture, I am gonna spray the guy Peng My Daddy My Thick Body miss it from afar, so not up close, but from afar, just like so. This will give that grip that you need. Okay, there you go, shake it up. And again, now I'm gonna go parallel to how her hair naturally parts. Okay, so I'm gonna put that the way. I'm gonna start with the first section here. And again, I'm gonna go back and we're gonna back home her hair. This is gonna push back all the baby hairs and hold them and tuck them in place, just like so. So all those little short hairs will stay right back, okay? Now get your foil, okay? And get your foil board. Create that anchor by folding the foil over the board, okay? Now you're gonna see me apply with tension here. So you see all that little baby hairs here? Now we're gonna use the comb and tuck all of that back behind the board. See that? Just like so, tuck that in. Use the board to anchor. There you go. 
Okay, you can switch to a 20 volume formula right now across uh, around the face frame, usually about three foils back to back. I switch down uh, one volume lower. Okay, so I'm going to get pretty close up here and we're going to feather right off. So just like you would a lightener, you would not overlap these really platinum blonde pieces. Leave those guys out because if you overlap them, they'll over absorb the tone. Okay, so take the comb out just like so. You could pull if you need to, just so there's anchorage. And then I'm going to reach for a foil to overlay. It's just like doing a retouch. You would not overlap the hair. Never overlap lightener unless you need to lift it further. But in this case, you don't need to overlap anything. So you can see here, I'm going to take another section right behind that. Okay, so I do about two or three back-to-back -back 20 volume and behind that I'll do 30. Okay, so I like to lift the hair up. You see all these little short hairs? Why draw attention to them? It's just like when you apply makeup to your face, you highlight your cheekbones, you highlight your nose bridge, you know, maybe your chin a little bit. But you don't put the highlight all around your, you know, your, all over your face because what's gonna happen is you're gonna wash out the face. Just like you put the highlight all around the head everywhere, um, you don't um, give contour, right? So it's about contouring the hair. Okay, so 20 volume. Again, right through here. Now, if I want to tuck, I can go ahead and tuck. There you go. And it, the key is my thumb here is holding the hair, so it creates this full anchor. So that, that way I have maximum tension. Okay, and you could do like a feather. So you feather it down. So it blends right down. Take that comb out. Take the board out, just like so. And I know it's hard juggling. Juggling is not my thing either. When I first got out of B school, I'm like, I have to hold the scissor or the, the, the shears, the scissors, a comb, hold the hair. There's too many things to hold. And then when you're like, you have to hold the foil, you have to hold the comb, you have to hold the clip. Like, what's happening here? I didn't sign up to, for juggling, you know what I mean? <laughs> It's like, what is happening? I'm not acrobatic. So, um, and then you discover, oh, okay, you start to kind of get the hang of things and you start to realize how easy it is. So you see here, I'm holding the comb, pushing all that back. And now you see the hair got darker. So I could switch back to 30 volumes. So pretty much the first two foils is 20, then back there is 30. Because if you use the same formula throughout the whole entire head, you're gonna get an even lifting results. The hair around the face gets too light and the hair in the back is not light enough. So to counterbalance everything, because of the way the hair naturally uh, falls and lays and the level that it starts with, this is the best way to do it. Okay, so you do that. This is one of my favorite techniques. Okay, we're gonna switch to 30. The Guy Tang Lift Me Up system will change your life. You can see how cool this is. It literally saves so much time. When I rinse this out the shampoo bowl, you will see how beautiful the tone looks. You see right there. Okay, leave the ends out. The ends are blonde. Okay, boom, pull, release, and then get that foil and overlay. And repeat till you get to the back, and then all we have to do is the top, and then we're done. All right, so I have Colleen at the shampoo bowl right now. We are gonna pull out. It's been 45 minutes after I had placed my last foil in. Uh, let's see what happens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, oh, look at this. So that does look very scary, doesn't it? Look at that. Whoa. So you're gonna look at it, you're, you're gonna think the hair looks purple, but trust me, it's not. We're gonna pull out this one as well. Okay, there you go. All right, I want to show you what happens when you rinse this off because the initial look of it could be frightening. So let me turn on the water. Okay. And, oh wow. Look at that beautiful blonde. Can you see that? Look at that tone. It's icy and pearlized. It's smoky, it's not yellow. 
You can see it right through there. You get that beautiful blind. And I'm gonna keep rinsing. Whoa, look at that. Look at this perfect blonde that you get. Okay, okay gonna keep rinsing and you can see the blonde coming through. Look at this. Whoa! One step. I see cool pearl blonde. And remember, I just used 20 volume around the face and then right behind it was 30. And look how it lifted evenly because the hair around the face is finer by doing the two foils around the face being 20 and then right behind that being 30, you can see that it lifted evenly. So it's all knowing when to mix what volume of developer. And you can see that it's toned in one step, but it still looks bright. Sometimes when we bleach the hair and then we rinse it, we try to tone it at the shampoo bowl. It becomes too flat and mousy and ashy. But notice how perfectly toned this tone looks. It's from that lift me up. It's gorgeous. Now I'm gonna rinse the ends. Rinse the ends out. Let's take a look. Oh, the ends lift it evenly too. Look at this. Oh my god, how perfect is this? And go ahead and pull out all the foils. See that? And all of her hair will be done in one step. So imagine that. You get this perfectly toned color in one step without toning at the shampoo bowl, and you still retain the brightness. Oftentimes, when we overtone the hair after we lighten it or bleach it, sometimes it can look very mousy and very, very flat. So that's one thing I love about using the Lift Me Up system because you still get that bright, raw feel, but it doesn't look yellow. It looks soft and pearlized and the tone actually sticks. I have used so many high lifts in the past, they either make the hair even more dry or more damaged, but with this, the hair feels so good. Sometimes turn your head here, sometimes kind of rinse this. I just get like satisfaction from rinsing. <laughs> Look at, whoa! Look at that. Look how ashy that looks. Look at the smoky tone. Right? Pure pearl. Sometimes when I have toned the hair in the past, afterwards sometimes it can lose that brightness that we want from that freshly highlighted hair. And for, for you, I know a lot of us out there want that bright, raw, highlighted blonde hair that doesn't look yellow, but also doesn't look too grayed out or too purpley. This is gonna be your best bet. Okay, I'm going to start off using Olaplex number no. 2 first. Olaplex number no. 2 has a pH of 3.5. It's going to close the cuticles, it's going to lock in the color, and make sure the hair feels good. Okay, she has a lot of hair, so I just want to make sure I get this on really good. Massage Olaplex number no. 2 in thoroughly. And also, it also helps detangle the hair too. So because we back comb the hair, this ensures that the tangle will loosen itself up and then also lock in the, the fresh tone that's been deposited into the hair. Okay, so now I'm rinsing out Olaplex number two, it has sat on for about five minutes. So I am sure that the hair is soothed, the cuticle has been soothed because it feels a lot more, it has a lot more slip and it feels really, really good. So that's one thing I love about using Olaplex number two. All right, so now I'm gonna use the Guy Tang My Coconut Color Securing Shampoo. I love this, it smells like cherry blossom. It's kind of Pump it right out there. Actually, I'm just gonna pump it onto my hands. Hold on a second, right here. Okay, I'm gonna pump it out into my hands. There you go. I'm gonna be professional here. <laughs> this is all we use in my house, by the way. Oh, really? My coffee mat? Uh-huh. Well, all of my identity products, but the shampoo and the conditioner, it's, I've got my husband and my brother both hooked on it. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm so we love it. And it smells good, right? It smells so good. I love the lather you get from it too. Mm -hmm. And one thing I love about my Covenant Color Securing Shampoo is that your hair feels clean for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So it gives your hair volume. Because before I used to shampoo my hair like every day, but now I only shampoo my hair like 
twice a week at the most because my hair still feels clean mm -hmm. for a long time. How this one step process is so nice because anytime I go to a salon, by the third time you have to get your hair washed, you're like, hmm. All right, because it, it'll be like bleaching uh -huh. or something. Wait, so they base you, they lighten you, and then they tone okay. you afterwards, right? So it yeah. seems like a long process. Yeah. So you like this, that's one step. Yes, it's such good results. It's so much faster. I just, I'm blown away. I couldn't believe how well toned my hair was after a year. A I, year? <laughs> that is crazy. Because <laughs> it still looks good after a year of not seeing you. Yeah. And I'm not using any purple shampoo or anything. I only use the My, my Health Yeah. But you could if you wanted to, but yeah, you don't need to. I didn't need to. It was so... Definitely not my experience in the past. Yeah. Well, right now we're going to talk about the My Hero X2 Collagen Spray. This is going to go right after the shampoo. This ensures that this is fresh bottle, by the way, so I'm going to get to talk. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so I love the actuator because you get to spray it on the hair and you get to feel the hair instantly feel softer right on contact. And the best thing about this is you use it in the back bar. Your client's going to love it. It gives a lot of slip and shine and body to the hair, but the cool thing is you can retell this to your client as well. So your client can use that at home in between their shampoo and conditioner and in between their visits to maintain the strength of their hair and their color longevity because it locks in the color at the same time and provide a lot of strength and uh, it reinforces the hair to, to, to have more uh, uh, elasticity and, and strength. I'm gonna spray that throughout. Just like that, I'm gonna let that sit for a few minutes before we put the uh, my Continent Color Secure and Conditioner right over the top and let that sit for another minute. We're gonna use the uh, the Color Secure and Conditioner next. I'm gonna pump this out, and this is very luxurious and thick, and I love the consistency of this because it gives you that um, like this dense cream feel. So when you put it in the hair. The hair not only get a lot of moisture, body, and shine, but it doesn't feel like it's weighed down. <laughs> oh wow, your hair feels so soft. Yeah. All of the back home just came right out. And here's the thing, another, another big tip I want to share with you is don't try to force the back home out at the shampoo bowl. Because when the hair is wet and you're trying to brush the back home out, you're actually damaging the hair more because wet hair is more vulnerable and more delicate and if you're ripping at the fabric of the hair you're causing more um, breakage to the hair so another product that i've been loving is actually the the new olaplex 4-in-1 moisture mask here so it gives moisture smoothness as body and shiny hair so this usually comes on after um, especially if you have a perm in your hair your hair has a lot of uh, dryness i like to put this on the end specifically, right on the ends, right through there. Yeah, especially those those ends that get a little fuzzy. I put that right there and massage that and let that sit for just a few moments and we'll be back. I can't wait for you to see the results because it's gonna be gorgeous. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna use Olaplex number six uh, styling cream in her hair. This is a leave-in cream. I love it because it makes the hair feel really smooth. So I massage it throughout my hands and I'm going to smooth through her hands here, all right? And I want you to see this, how beautiful this is going to look. Now it's wet, so don't judge it when it's wet, it looks a little bit deeper. But you can see where the highlights are taking place here. You can see how beautifully toned the, the color is. And you can tell that when this is dry, it's going to look gorgeous. It's going to massage throughout her hair here. And then, now we're going to blow dry her hair. All right, look at this color. So I want you to get real close here as I brush that Olaplex number six through her hair. You can see, even though it's wet, and of course wet hair looks deeper, look how beautifully toned that hair looks. No extra step. You can see right there. It's super pearlized, icy. And we did the maximum lift with the maximum tone. And you can see right in through there. Whoa! And this is on wet hair. So imagine when we blow dry this, how bright this color is gonna look. All right, so now is a great time to layer products. I love layering products, and 
When you layer products, it's about knowing when to layer it. So I love putting the cream on with the number six, and I'm gonna put about one or two pumps of the hair loop. So this is the guy tang my daddy hair loop. Less is more, it smells amazing by the way. You don't need too, too much. And just make sure you massage in between your fingers and focus mainly on those ends right and down through there. And then we're gonna blow dry our hair and we'll be back. Are y'all ready for this? We're gonna reveal Colleen's hair. <laughs> Look at that pearl tone. We lifted her up and we toned her down all at one step. <laughs> one step. Can you believe it? No. I mean, you were here for the whole experience, you whole know. Whole thing. Whole thing. One, one step. One. Not two, not three, not four. One step. Mm -hmm. One formula, pearl, and boom. Look at this coloration. When she turns to the side and I fold her hair, every movement I make, you can see that dimension, her natural color just flows seamlessly into those pearl highlights. Y'all, seriously, I showed you the techniques, you saw it. What are you waiting for? Okay, don't resist. If you have not tried Lift Me Up, you haven't experienced a life-changing experience because let me tell you what, once you use it, your life is gonna be a lot more fun. Don't you agree that life is too short, we should have more fun while we're working? Agreed. Right? Fully agree. I mean, the techniques, watch this video again, okay? And you'll see the techniques, you see the formulations, and boom, one step in your clients have a lot more fun. You're gonna have a lot more fun. I think if you're too comfortable, then you're too comfortable. That means you're not growing, you gotta grow. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, I hope you love this video. You get all the products that I share with you today at Cosmopop or on the call. Change your life. Trust me. You're gonna love it. Mm. Right, Colleen? Yeah. Do a little shimmy for them. I'm gonna shimmy, shimmy, <laughs> with laugh, right? Laugh. Right in the wrinkle. Oh, all right. Oh. <laughs> all right, I'll see you next time and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.